Now with Les Gotti. It's Late Night with David Letterman. Tonight, George Carlin, singer Al Green, and actress Christine Lottie. Plus, Paul Schaefer and the world's most dangerous man. And now, a man who can smell a pony a mile away, David Letterman. Thank you very much for uh, dialing us up on your home television set. Welcome to the show. As uh, kind of interesting, yesterday, this happens uh, every year, Charles Manson is eligible for parole, and he goes, he goes uh, in front of the parole board, and he makes his presentation, and then they decide whether or not they feel that Charles Manson, convicted mass murderer, is suitable to be paroled. And as, as you would guess, uh, they decided he was not uh, suitably uh, rehabilitated for parole. And he, was, he took it very hard. For some reason, yesterday's announcement came as a real bombshell to this guy. And he, he, he was very worked up. And, and when they made the announcement, he looked at the panel and he said, very bitterly, he says, it's because I'm a psychopathic homicidal maniac, isn't it? <laughs> Couple of stunt men who worked on Wayne's World, ladies and gentlemen. They're, they're here today. Nice to have them. <laughs> yeah, it is. Always. Uh, I don't know if you've been following the news in uh, Russia, but over the weekend, uh, economy experts announced that the, in Russia, in Moscow specifically, gasoline prices, if you take your car into a gasoline station there in uh, Moscow, gasoline prices have been increased 400%. The increase of 400%, but the spokesman was quick to explain, with every fill-up, you get an NFL glass. So, well, that's something, something going on there. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know. Uh, this week, of course, <laughs> this week, of course, is uh, uh, Secretary's Week, and, and today, I believe, if I have my dates right, today is Earth Day. So we have two... Two major events going on simultaneously, and, and many General Electric executives here in the building are celebrating both events today by treating their secretaries like dirt. So I think... A woman in the audience doing this, and her friend, her friend grabbed her and said to her, look, you're on camera behaving like a seal. <laughs> and they, they both enjoyed a, a good laugh. Well, on, the, uh, on the program tonight, ladies and gentlemen, George Carlin will be joining us. That's right. A very, a very talented and lovely actress. I believe I say that every time I introduce an actress. <laughs> But tonight, it happens to be true, Christine Lottie is here, and, yes, and Al Green. Now, here's our friend Paul Schaefer, who's over here. Yeah. I don't know. Hello, David. Hello, Paul. Nice to see you, sir. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. How are you doing? Thank you very much. David, you're what? doing a new walk this I got, evening. I'm trying out a little something here. What is this? It's just a thing? little something. I just... It's a new, it's a sprightly it's just, thing. Just, it's, just a, a it's not, for, it's, it's more for, of an attitude than yeah, a walk, well, really. It's, just, it's a little something for spring, and I just it's thought It's lovely, I, it's a spring yeah, in your step, you a bounce much. in your yeah, step. Thank you. Hey, he's here again, he's here not because he has to be That's here. That's right. He's got his own career. Exactly. He makes his own records, That's he scores right. movies. 
but he's here because he loves you. Oh, David Sandborn on the alto saxophone. He does not have to be here. He doesn't have to be here. He doesn't have to be here. Some, something, something wonderful is happening tonight on the program, uh, and it's never happened before, and I just thought I'd take a second here to call attention to it. A fine young man from our studio audience, moments before the show began tonight, <laughs> asked me if, if he could have my tie. <laughs> Where is, there he is, right there. I'm, I'm sorry, son, the deal didn't go through. <laughs> so I have vowed, I feel like Babe Ruth. I have vowed to this young man, when the program is over, I'm going to give him my tie. Oh, that's beautiful, yeah. that's beautiful. And I, and I have a feeling that it's going to go just, just great with that outfit. <laughs> Baseball, it's uh, baseball season. Oh, before we do this, uh, it, since it is Earth Day, let's, uh, let's open the, uh, the sunroof and see what the weather is. Earlier today, for the last five or six days here in New York City, it's been lousy, lousy weather, and they said it was supposed to be sunny and lovely today. So Hal, yes, sir. that's our director and uh, racing legend, Hal Gurney. Hal, do me a favor, open up that uh, sunroof there, and let's see if the weather here in New York City has improved from earlier, shall we? Up, All right, open that uh, sunroof up, because it was uh, dreary and overcast and uh, gray and... <laughs> Kind of damp and uh, cloudy, and uh, put you... eh, open it right up. Oh, look, Paul! Beautiful, beautiful azure sky, big white wispy puffy clouds. Yeah, so we turned out to be a pretty nice Earth Day uh, here in New York. It's gotten pretty. <laughs> what the hell was that? Some... Somebody is dropping aluminum cans. Sorry, on me. Dave. What? I thought this was a recycling bin. <laughs> <laughs> that, ladies and gentlemen, is Peabody Award-winning comedy. All right, since uh, we're right here in the uh, the beginning of the baseball uh, season, what's your favorite baseball team, Paul? Uh, the Blue Jays. Toronto Blue Jays. Some, some say the best team in baseball today. Really? Well, yeah. th thank you yeah. very much. I didn't know you cared. <laughs> Who do you like? Oh, I like, you know, of course, uh, Cincinnati Reds. I grew up with the Cincinnati Reds. Uh -huh. Yeah, I was clubhouse boy till I was 26. <laughs> didn't know about you. Yeah. But... Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, since uh, um, it is the beginning of the baseball season, we thought, well, heck, we're just going to show you now a little something we've put together the history of baseball. Paul, is there any stirring baseball yes. music for this? Because it's on, deux, trois plages, et vous êtes outré. Wow. A little French, a little French. A little fake French. A little bad French. You've cut off your comma. No, oh, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm developing a gap here. We're going to have to get some tape or a staple gun, and we'll close it up. <laughs> it's the history of baseball, ladies and gentlemen. Here you go. Way back in 1871, the first fat guy breaks a ballpark seat. <laughs> that happened in 1871. History was made. Then. That's right. 1916. Yep, Babe Ruth's first hooker. There she is. <laughs> By the way, John, John Goodman is the babe. He is. <laughs> 19, 1928, Yankee backup catcher Benny Bingo promises kid in hospital that if he gets in the game, he'll take a fastball in the sternum for the kid. <laughs> Let a fastball bounce right off his sternum. Uh, 1938, Lou Gehrig utters the immortal words, Today I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Later, Gehrig changes his mind when he hears about Rick Ocasek. <laughs> <laughs> he's not really the luckiest. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, married to leggy supermodel Pauline Poroskova. That's Leggy lucky. supermodel. Yeah, that's, are they married? That's yeah, they are married. Yes, sir. 1939, continuing now with the history of baseball. Some guy rebroadcast part of a game without the express written consent of Major League Baseball. World War II begins. <laughs> I knew something like that would happen. Mm -hmm. 
1941, Joe DiMaggio hits safely in 56 consecutive games. Streak ends when he is troubled by a recurring nightmare about a machine that makes fresh brewed coffee in his kitchen. <laughs> you know, the show is going so well, I, I don't know that I'll be able to part with this tie. <laughs> it, it, may be, it may become my good luck tie. Okay, well. In uh, 1966, rookie Nolan Ryan sells his soul to the devil. I didn't realize that. <laughs> you go up into Cooperstown and you learn that kind of stuff, or, or as baseball players pronounce it, Cooperstown. 1969, San Diego scout spots freakishly large chicken, decides it would be a perfect mascot for the San Diego Padres. Yeah, you're not getting this tie, pal. <laughs> This is my parachute right here. Yeah. Saving it. Uh, 1972, Tommy Lasorda eats the last sensible dinner he will have until 1979. 1973, designated hitter rule adopted by American League. That's right, 1974, no tongue rule adopted by Morgana the Kissing Bandit. 1977, scientists mix polypropylene with heated glucose polymers, hoping to make an industrial cleaner. Instead, they invent ballpark nacho cheese. <laughs> 1979, while playing for Milwaukee, Sixto Lescano hits 28 home runs, drives in 101 runs, setting all-time record for guys named Sixto. <laughs> I'm having an out-of-body experience. <laughs> I'm somewhere else now, yes. making that childish noise. Uh, 1979, Pirates, Pirates, the Pittsburgh Pirates, win the World Series and adopt the theme song, We Are Family. 1987. <laughs> 1987, We Are Family adopted as theme song for Steve Garvey. <laughs> Nineteen eighty-nine, Mets third baseman Howard Johnson suspected of corking his bat. Nineteen eighty-nine, Red Sox third baseman Wade Boggs suspected of corking his pants. Uh, Nineteen ninety-one, Mets pitcher David Cohen ejected from game for getting too warmed up in the bullpen. There you go. That's our history of baseball. Cost those boys in the Hudson. All right, we're going to a, uh, do a commercial. When we come back, George Carlin will be here. Come on back, folks. Thanks for being here. The band, Sid McGinnis, Will Lee, uh, Anton Zip, and uh, David Sanborn Anton sitting. Fig Anton Fig, Anton Fig, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. A lot of people have been calling in, wanting to know. They just tuned in the show a little bit late, wanting to know: Will we ever repeat the history of baseball piece we did a couple of minutes ago? <laughs> I don't know, Bob. Can we repeat that history of baseball piece? It'll be in the newsletter. So if you subscribe to our newsletter, or you want to phone the Late Night with David Letterman hotline immediately following the broadcast, the information will be there. And by the way, stay tuned for information on how you can purchase coffee mugs and t-shirts. <laughs> Let's do the uh, top 10 list and then get on with the uh, big program. Here, here's a dumb guy sitting at home watching the program with his wife. He's had a little too much over-the-counter cough medicine. Okay. Hey, uh, Helen. I think them dots is moving. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, the category tonight, uh, by the way, the home office is now in Tahlequah, Oklahoma. If you have any complaints about the show, address them to the home office there in Tahlequah, Oklahoma. Uh, the category tonight, top 10 ways the airlines are attracting passengers. You know, I don't know whether it's the recession, I don't know whether it's just generally business uh, troubles uh, around the world these days, but the, uh, the airlines are having a lot of trouble economically. A lot of them have gone out of business. Yeah. Uh, Eastern is gone. gone. Yeah, one, one of the premier pioneer airlines, Eastern Airlines, adios, say Imagine goodbye, that. get a cab, dust, history, <laughs> vapor. Uh, Pan Am, I believe Pan Am is gone. Gone already? Yeah. No. Haven't they gone? They're yeah. bankruptcy and... Bankrupt. Yeah. Out of here. Uh, TWA hanging on to a Chapter 11. Is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. So they're almost out. So that only leaves uh, American and uh, some others. And a few others. <laughs> a lot of them are lowering prices drastically to get custom to attract customers. That's exactly That's my one point. of the ways Exactly doing the point it. I was trying to make. Thank you. Thank you and God bless you, Paul. Thank you. <laughs> That's the category of tonight's top ten list. Top ten other ways the airlines now are attracting passengers. American, Americans slash their prices across the board. Yeah. You can now, a family of six, can fly round trip from New York City to Los Angeles for eight dollars. Man. That's, that's, that's man. true. And that's business class, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Top ten other ways the... What? Just a little visual dumb guy there. You don't give us the full dumb yeah, guy. Yeah, that's right. I a little I, hint of him. I'm so dumb, I couldn't think of anything, so I just thought, well, I'll, just, I'll give him a, just a hint of the dumb just guy. A, a visual hint of the dumb guy. But you know... I know! I know! But you know, a dumb guy can't have something to say every minute of his no, life. No, that's true. He's dumb. Yeah, he's, that's he's the problem. Dumb. He's just, he's just a guy. <laughs> Sometimes... <laughs> He just looks and wonders. Are we really very late? Okay, we'll be all right. Uh, the category now, he looks and wonders. Yes, it's, it's the always questioning dumb guy. He quest yeah. questions life. Yeah. Top ten other ways the airlines are attracting passengers. Here we go, number ten. New cockpit fare gives you the chance to test your skills at the controls. Uh, number nine, bring a gallon of jet fuel, get a free upgrade. Number eight. Turbo Roasted Peanuts, number seven. All flight crews now include at least one Star Trek cast member. Uh, number six, strip searches on demand, number five. Seat backs and tray tables, leave them any way you want. Number four, bat day, number three, for a buck you can cling to the landing gear. Number two, one window left open so you can drop stuff. And the number one way airlines are attracting passengers, hopless baggage handlers. There you go. All right, let's uh, bring out our first guest, a very funny man. And the important thing, if you're going into the world of comedy, the real test is how long can you be funny? And he's been funny for a long, long time. Uh, he's been performing stand-up for the last 30 years. Uh, he has a brand new special, George Carlin, live at the Paramount. Live at the Paramount. That takes place uh, Saturday. Saturday night, a live event right here in the city. Uh, you can see it on HBO. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome George Carlin. George I had, a, I had an ovary removed. Oh, no, you didn't. No? No, you the didn't. hide and seek injury? <laughs> All right. Good to, good, I'm really okay. Good to see you. This Thank is, you. This is very exciting for me, and I guess even more exciting for you for a couple of reasons, uh -huh. but I know you always enjoy coming back to New York City. Yeah. Yep. Well, hometown, doing this show from my hometown, that's great. Yep. And I love the restaurants. Uh, you know, it's got the, the best restaurants. 30,000 different restaurants yeah. in New York City. Yep. Only a few worth mentioning on the David Letterman show. <laughs> All right, let's hear them. Vinny's House of Toast. Oh. <laughs> I just, I go back all the time. Vinny and his lovely wife, Dawn, God bless her. Uh, they've come up with over 300 ways to serve toast. Uh-huh. And uh, my favorite is, well, I like the roast toast. It's nice. It sounds... <laughs> but give me a toast sandwich. Yeah. You know? Uh, how, how do they handle that? What do they I, do with that? I like the toast sandwich on toast, uh -huh. personally. Oh, so you get it toasted. Yeah. I get it. But you can get the toast sandwich on plain bread. It's uh -huh. just as good. Yeah. Just as good. Get it on a, get it on a bun, maybe? Toast on a bun. Yeah, because yeah, the toast <laughs> sticks out a little from the bun. 
the contours being different. Uh -huh. So I'm over there. That's usually in the afternoon because mm -hmm. that's light fair. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> nighttime, nighttime, trying to impress somebody. Yeah. Special place in Soho, south of Houston. <laughs> Down in Soho. Hey, you know this yeah, town. Well, I learned some of this stuff when I was out in California. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Nice place called Bombs Away. Have you ever been in there? No, Bombs Away. Is it a new Bom place? Very interesting. Bombs uh -huh. Away. The patrons sit on the ground floor. Kitchen is on the balcony. <laughs> and when the chef, when they, you know, finish cooking right. your food, they toss it off. Bombs Away! Oh, is that right? You know? <laughs> and you got to catch it on your plate. Real easy with like a T-bone steak. Soup. A mess. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. Peas. No fun nope, peas. No, peas are nice no good. Nice thing, if it lands on the floor, on the house. <laughs> Food is free if you don't catch it in your plate. Wow. Yeah. You know, I hadn't heard of that place. Yeah, I, I love the city. Yeah. And, and, and there's one place that's closed now, to, unfortunately. It was a restaurant for the blind, and they had to close because of the incredible cleaning costs each night, you know. But I, I haven't been there a long time, and they tell me it's closed. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, let's, let's talk a little bit more about... Uh, now, you, of course, you do the stand-up uh, comedy, and you've yeah. been doing it. And, and like I said, I think it's a real tribute to, to your ability you. and your appeal you. that you could have a, a great career for, the, for this long, certainly. Sure. But you do other things. You were in the movie uh, The Prince of Tides. Yes, I was. Yeah. I was in Prince of Tides. I do, do Shining Time Station, a children's show Now, what, tell me about that, because... Thank you. Thank you. That, by the way, is the dictionary definition of a smattering of applause. Yes, <laughs> You won't, you won't get a better example no, than no, that. that. That's the one they have right on that same page. <laughs> yeah. Uh, tell me about the, the PBS show. Well, that, that's, a, that's a children's show called Shining Time Station. Mm -hmm. I play a little fellow called <laughs> Mr. Conductor. <laughs> More than this matter. Yeah. That was a sprinkling. Yeah. sprinkling. That was a little better, even. But, but you know what? I'm in town for another reason, and that has to do with my career. Uh, like the Madonna deal, you heard about Madonna. Oh, sixty million yeah. dollar blockbuster okay. deal. Mine is not quite that, that much money involved. More thirty five thousand dollars, but <laughs> we are. We're pulling together all of my many show business interests under one roof. Oh, great! Yeah, and we're going to send it out that way. Uh -huh. uh, first of all, I represent people now. We're representing other artists. So in the management business. That's well, yeah. sort of. Yes. Yeah. First, I got the first guy I ever wrote a novel in chapstick. <laughs> <laughs> You heard, you heard sometimes they say this is a good summer book, this is a good winter book. The in original chapter. manuscript, manuscript right. actually executed in, in chapstick. chapstick. Wow. Yeah. And uh, something Paul and the guys would be interested in, we have a guy who uh, plays classical music on the bugle. Uh -huh. that, it takes a, a hell of a lip, yeah. but he's, yeah. he's good. Put him together with a chapstick guy, and maybe. Because, maybe as yeah, a duo, yeah. Prolong their careers. Uh, yes. See? That's why you're I'm, here. I'm an idea guy. That's why you're yeah. here. Uh, oh, another, a band. I'm representing a band from England, heavy metal band that's called So Long Mate. Uh -huh. And during each performance, one of the members of the band is killed by the rest of the band. <laughs> beaten to death or yeah, something? Yeah, beaten to death. And uh, we, the, the nice thing is the sound of the band is constantly changing. <laughs> Open auditions all year yeah. round. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I'm, I'm glad things are yeah, uh, going just, so well I know for you. I'm very excited about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, aren't we supposed to be excited <laughs> oh, about yeah, these we're things? in show business. It's, it's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. It's so exciting. It's a challenge. It's, it's a stretch. challenge. It's a dream it's, and come true. Good people to work with. Yeah. Good people uh, to work with. We have to do uh, one little commercial here, and then George will uh, be right back. the band sounds great the best part of the show night in and night out is the band you sound great Thank you. and then when when david sanborn comes in you sound like a great band with a saxophone uh, <laughs> is I that a compliment i couldn't have put it any better <laughs> it, what i'm trying to say it was just it sounded yeah, terrific thanks, yeah. uh george carlin is here and al green man now there yeah. that's going to be good that's going to be a number and uh, christine lottie uh, george what else should we talk about let's talk a little bit uh, about things that you've been uh, noticing for your, uh, your stand-up act, things you notice uh, just in life, things about the news, uh, science, politics, language. Uh, language! language. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, it's, 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 it's fun to look closer at things we say and, and think nothing of. Fine mm -hmm. and dandy. Can I say this to you? Fine and dandy. Yeah, you say to a guy, how are you? She's fine and dandy. Exactly. Not me. Yeah, I never no. say it, I'm fine and dandy. You know why? No. I'm never both of those things at the same time. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sometimes I'm fine, uh -huh. not dandy. I see. <laughs> Close to dandy, 
Yeah, approaching dandy. <laughs> in the vicinity of dandy, uh -huh. not dandy. Yeah. Occasionally, rarely, I'm dandy. Uh -huh. Really dandy. <laughs> Not fine. Not fine, no. One time, 1965, uh -huh. August, for about an hour, I was both fine and dandy. Wow! At the same time. Nobody asked me how I was. Yeah, well. <laughs> I got a lot of these. Uh, uh, what else? Down the tubes. Down the tubes. People say that. Fairly the, modern term. The country is speaking. going down the tubes. No. What tubes? <laughs> Have you seen any tubes? Mm, no. Where are the tubes? Where do they go? I don't know. And how come there's more than one tube? Wouldn't one tube be fine for one country? Does every state have to have its own tube now? <laughs> Kentucky has a tube. North Carolina has a tube. <laughs> and, and then I wonder about, you say, down the tubes. I think one tube would be fine. You know, and I'm forgetting the ending of this. <laughs> you know? so, so, remember the ending. So you yourself oh, I know what. If, if you the had, tubes. I did. Yeah. If you had only one tube, it would have to be so big. People would have noticed this tube by now. <laughs> Some guy would have said, Joey, look at a big tube over there. Yeah. You, never that. That, yeah. you never hear that. No. You know why? No. no tubes. No tubes. No, no. tubes. No. Yeah. Down the pike. Down the, down the pike. Now, that's an old one, old I think. One. Yeah. Meanest guy ever came down the pike. What about guys who came up the pike? <laughs> Not everybody lives north of the pike, you know. <laughs> Some guys have to come up the yeah. pike, and they're really mean. Right. Because they never get mentioned. Yeah. How about guys who don't use the pike? Guy comes on Amtrak. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, he's the meanest guy ever arrived on Amtrak. It doesn't sound right. No. It doesn't sound right. Takes the cake. Where does he take it? <laughs> Where do you take a cake? To the museum? Down, down the tube? Down the tube. Down the tube. <laughs> That's, That's why he's here. Or up the pipe or down the That's pipe. That's right. You know where I would take a cake? I would take a cake to the bakery and see the other cakes. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be nice? How come Excellent. they don't take the pie? Yeah. Pie is easier to carry than a cake. Yeah. Easy as pie. Easy as pie. Cake is easy to carry, too. Yeah. Piece of cake. Uh -huh. huh? <laughs> yeah. That's the way I make yeah. my living. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, you, you get a little nervous. A person can get a little nervous observing that, and you think to yourself, Maybe George isn't taking the medication <laughs> because it can go on and well, on and on. He's like doubled it. up. Yeah. Uh, the, <laughs> well, no, not anymore. No, no. no. Now this, uh, the big show is Saturday night. Now let's explain this. It yes. will be live. It'll go out live uh, to HB on HBO satellite yep. or whatever you call that stuff they do now. Like that grasp of technology. <laughs> and, um, but it's at the, the Paramount Theater. Like, it's Paramount like 5,000, 6,000 seats. Square Garden, about 5,500 5, seats, something now, like do that. Do people pay to go in there and see the show? Yeah, they'll see that, and they'll also see... Then I, I, I do an extra half hour, you yeah. know, and I don't want to cheat them, and I got an opening act, I want to cheat them. So they see a real show, mm -hmm. but for an hour, it's, it's broadcast, and then we tape it, of course, and then yeah. cut it up and fix it up so that the replays are better than the live one. Th this, is like, this is like a big deal, though. There's a lot of pressure doing a live broadcast. Right? Yeah, a bit. But once you get started, I think you forget it. We did one two years ago uh, live. It was all right. right. A lot of fun. I threw up once. And it was OK. All right. <laughs> uh, good to see you. Thank you. And good, uh, good luck with the big show. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Take care. George Carlin, kids. We'll be right back.